Hey y'all, I'm Tim. We're in Canton, Georgia at the Cox Arboretum, bringing you some amazing content today. We're so excited to be here. We love this place. There's amazing Japanese maples everywhere. And today we're bringing you a really cool video. Hey, I'm Matt. Today we're gonna be doing top five Japanese maples in the Cox Arboretum. Uh, we're a huge fan of Japanese maples. If you don't notice, here on the Mr. Maple Show, we provide daily content for gardeners and often Japanese maples related. Number five. So I'm here in the Cox Arboretum today, and as you know, we're talking about some of our top five favorite Japanese maples here in the Cox Arboretum. I've got Tom Cox with me, and I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about this Acer Palmatum Dissectum Edgewood. Uh, it is glowing here in the garden right now, Tom. Well, it's one of our very favorites. I, I said earlier again that um, any plant can look good in the spring when it first comes out. But how does that plant look after it's gone through a summer here of heat and insects and drought and drenching rains? So you can look here at this maple. Yeah. It just, I love the, I love the uh, shape of it. It's not a space bandit in terms of taking up a lot of space. It's slow growing enough to where it's not gonna eat you up right away. It allows you, if you want to do some, some selective pruning on it, you could even keep it smaller but reliable all year. And look, there's no, no defoliation at all. Other yeah, than it looks great here. I believe you said this specific one was a gift from our mutual friend, Ed Shin. It was. Uh, I have some grafted out of Ed Shin's garden as well. Uh, I love this plant. Early spring, this tree's actually gonna leaf out with kind of a lavendery purple color. Yep. And what makes it so unique is it goes from that lavender purple color into this goldeny orange in the fall, which makes it really nice. I've actually seen this tree sold in the trade as Edgewood Golden or Edgewood Orange. I keep it under that original name, Edgewood, from uh, Red Maple Nurseries. It's gotten so popular from Ed Shin's garden, and I love seeing it here in Canton in the Cox Arboretum. It's always one of my favorite dissectums. I think it's uh, brutally underused for a dissectum. Okay. Edgewood could be, I think it could be, you know, as popular as many of our classic Japanese maples that just hadn't gotten out there enough. Well, I know when Ed shared this with us, he um, told me at the time, this is going to be one of your connoisseur plants. <laughs> right. And I didn't know anything about it at the time. It just kind of, well, I stuck it here, though, where it would be prominent, where people could see it when you park, what have you. And I could see it. I didn't anticipate being in a wheelchair back then, but it is uh, a stunning maple. It is uh, highly, highly, highly recommended. And if you guys are not producing it, in the hundreds right now. Oh yeah. Hopefully after this video, you listeners out there are gonna want this plant. Uh, as Coach Bear Bryant used to say, it ain't nothing but a winner. <laughs> for sure. Number four. Guys, next up on our top five Japanese maples this week at the Cox Arboretum, we've got none other than Acer Palmatum Dissectum Spring Delight. Check out the specimen. I mean, this thing has some amazing size to it. Love this plant for the spring color when this thing really gives that purple border and purple tinges to the tips of the dissected leaf. That makes this tree put on an amazing spring display, green during the summer. But as you can tell, this thing's about to light up with yellows and oranges in the fall. Right. And we're just right on the cusp of it. I mean, it's just about to be in a full-fledged fall color mm -hmm. any day now. And this is a plant I just love. I mean, it's an amazing plant. This is one of the earliest of the specimen. This tree was selected by our friend Talon Buckholz for having that bright purple border in the early spring. Think Tsumagaki times waterfall. You're gonna get things you like about both those trees with this one. Now, Talon actually gifted this tree to Tom very early on. This is one of the oldest specimens of Spring Delight out there. This tree is actually over 20 years old, an amazing specimen. We'll have to take a look up under the hood and show you a little bit inside this Spring Delight. I love what Spring Delight does. It doesn't get very tall, it gets very wide, and really has this really nice cascading umbrella habit. So the effect is very graceful with this color that you get in the springtime. During the summer, it gives you a nice green summery feel, but then during the fall, with this fall color that it's about to be putting on, this is a tree that just puts on an amazing display out in the landscape and garden. Yeah, whether it's spring, summer, or fall, or even winter, you know, I come here and view this tree out of leaf and it still has some amazing structures here in the garden. Number three, check out this specimen 
of Acer Palmatum Shishigashira, the lion's head Japanese maple. Yeah, you know this one, guys, but we couldn't help but get it on camera. Tom Cox has a gorgeous specimen here in the garden. We're a little early for the fall color. In a few weeks, this tree is going to be stealing the show. It is blazing orange with accents of red and yellow throughout it. It is one of my all-time favorite Japanese maples for fall color. Maybe at the top. It's, it's definitely in my, my top for fall color. And it's always consistent, too. I love that it's late after a lot of things have already dropped. This one's really going to be stealing the show soon. This one has already started. You're starting to see a lot of orange starting in here. But this plant is extremely hardy and easy to grow. I know that this plant can handle full sun in many areas and is extremely easy and hardy in those full sun situations. It's one of the more heat tolerant Japanese maples that we do, but it's a slow growing dwarf. We're looking behind us is probably a 20 year specimen. Yeah, easily, I mean, easily. This is an amazing specimen of Shishigashira. And that's one of the reasons it's one of our favorites here at the Cox Arboretum this week is because of the size and stature of this plant. I mean, it takes a long time to get this size. This one can handle a good bit of sun. I do find it to be faster growing if you could provide some late day shade for it. It actually increases the growth rate. I've had cousins growing this one in Columbia, South Carolina in red dirt clay against a brick house. And you know how hot Columbia, South Carolina gets. It didn't skip a beat. It looked amazing and uh, slowed down the growth rate a little bit, but it didn't burn. If you're getting some shade on it though, it's going to be a little bit more picked up on the growth rate. An awesome tree that always shows out. I love that that dark, almost evergreen color it has. I mean, it's a deciduous plant, but it has that dark, what we think of as evergreen green, and especially in the early spring and summer, holds that very consistently throughout the entire summer. And it's one of the easiest trees to grow without a lot of leaf burn. It's a very simple plant to grow. It's always been classic for bonsai because of that small leaf and very unique habit to it. Uh, one of our favorite Japanese maples, if you're watching the Mr. Maple Show, you know it's one we always talk about, so we had to get it into our top five of the day at the Cox Arboretum. Now, the really reasons I love this plant is the texture of the leaves. The texture of the leaves with that curled leaf gives this something very special and unique. The leaf stalks are very short as well, and because of that, it gets this very tight, clump-like appearance, which makes this plant give that lion's head type appearance as well. Shishi was a mythological lion in Japanese literature. So when we call this a lion's head, it really isn't talking about all lion's head. It's talking about a very specific lion's head from Japanese literature. Matt often uses the reference, it's almost like someone quoting Mickey Mouse, but instead with Japanese old ancient literature when we talk about Shishi, the Shishi Gashira, the lion's head. Love this plant. Classic. It's one of the oldest Japanese maples from Japanese literature still in existence and still getting propagated today and there's no there's no wonder why because this tree is so unique and so different guys this one's been hot since the 1700s and it's still a classic today it's still just as highly sought after if not more popular after all these years acer palmatum shishigashira number two so i wanted to get this one on camera this is one of the biggest acer palmatum ruby ridges i've ever seen uh, Ruby Ridge is an interesting plant with a very, very thick folds to it. This one leaves out in the early spring almost black. It's one of the darkest red Japanese maples you'll ever see, which makes really cool when it gets to this orangey fall color. It gets a really orangey golden fall color that's really quite spectacular. I really like this plant too because it has thicker branching. New growth on this thing is very thick. So young one gallon plants will have even very old, thick looking trunks. Love this plant. It was a selection by our good friend, Dan Himes. We actually had the pleasure of going and seeing the original Ruby Ridge. We love this plant. This plant has been known under many different names from Red Rugose. This was found as a chance seedling from Rugose that Dan had got from J.D. Veritrees. Love this plant because it has such unique colors. I mean, right now it's really going some really nice shades of green malted with orange and red. I mean, I think this one might even be bigger than the original. This is a huge specimen of this. Uh, it's here in the Cox Arboretum. Uh, again, in early spring, this thing is almost black. It's one of the darkest reds you've ever seen, one of the deepest maroons. So it really changes quite a bit into those orangey to almost golden yellows late. A uh, really unique plant. I love how leathery the foliage is. It's very thick. It has Each leaf has a very thick texture to it. It feels unlike any other Acer palmatums I've ever seen. And I think this plant is a very old specimen. I mean, typically this is a plant that in 10 years will be about six to seven feet in height. So it's a very slow grower, great for containers. But as you can see here, this tree's definitely got some size to it, which means this tree's got a lot of age to it as well. Because Japanese maples, we always talk about plants 
in a time frame because Japanese maples, they continue to grow after that 10 years. We always do that. Some people use the marketing term of maturity and maturity is a made up term with Japanese maples because a Japanese maple can live for over 200 years. We always love to get mature specimens on camera whenever possible. And this one stood out to us. It's rare to see it this size. Especially when they're fall color like this. We're here at Cox Gardens in mid to late October. And this thing is right on fire. I mean, really, really good fall color. I really hope you've enjoyed seeing this plant and seeing a mature specimen right here behind us. Number one. Guys, last but not least here, we've got Acer Palmatum Dissectum Tamukiyama. Now, how did this one get in our top list? Tom said it's one of his very best trees here. That's why it's got a prominent spot here in front of his home. And it's one of his best performers here in the deep south. We were talking to Tom today on a podcast and he was telling us that this is one of his favorite Japanese maples for people growing trees in the southeast. If you're looking to grow a tree in the southeast, he thinks this is a fantastic tree. And we agree. I mean, Tamukiyama is a classic Japanese maple by Kobayashi Mumiji in Japan. And it's one of the red weeping lace leaves that holds its color the best of any of the red weeping lace leaves. We love this plant. It's another classic that's been around for over 300 years. And you can see why it's got a prominent spot here in front of his home in the Cox Arboretum. You know, Tom only puts his favorites up next to the house, and there's a reason why this one's here. It holds that color, it looks good in every single season, even out of leaf. The bones of this plant are quite exciting. It's got that grayer, older growth here, and it really makes a nice structural plant and really adds a lot to this front yard here at the Cox Arboretum. We hope you like this top five plants of the week at the Cox Arboretum. These are just five of our favorite Japanese maples that we wanted to get on camera for you. Maybe plants we talked about with Tom that we didn't get to do a follow-up on in our walkthrough. So we wanted to get these five here for you today and kind of highlight some of the great plants that are growing here at the Cox Arboretum. We love Japanese maples and here at the Cox Arboretum there's tons. I mean there's tons of Japanese maples. Everybody thinks conifers with Tom Cox and the guy's got an amazing maple collection. I know we grew up coming here and going through and checking out all the maples in this garden. So this place feels like home. It's great to be back here again. And it's such an amazing maple collection as well. I, like Matt said, I really hope you've enjoyed this video on top five Japanese maples of the week. The top five we talked about, just some amazing specimens out here in the landscape. Hey, special thanks to Tom and Evelyn Cox for their invitation here to come and shoot at their Arboretum. It's an amazing place if you ever get to check it out. Definitely check out our full podcast where we get to sit down and get personal and get in-depth with Tom Cox. That'll be on all major podcast platforms. And if it hasn't aired by the time you're watching this video, it's coming very soon. So you want to sign up for the Mr. Maple Show on any of your favorite podcast platforms. As always, you can catch our shows here daily on YouTube. We're putting out a new show every single day at 9 a.m. Eastern. And then our podcast videos air Sundays at 8 p.m. So guys, get involved, like, subscribe, and share our videos. We really appreciate you tuning in, especially when we get to get out in these gardens. We're like a kid in a candy store where we get to get out and go to the places we want to go. We've been dying to get out and get to more Arboretums and get more content like this for you. If you like this type of Japanese maple content and you want to support this channel, remember, shop with us at MrMaple.com. We do over a thousand varieties of Japanese maples. We mail order directly to your door. We would really appreciate it if you shopped with Mr. Maple because we put all this hard work in to making this Japanese maple content available for you. Hey, take care. God bless. And have a great day.